Welcome again to Cash Mountain. I am your host today, Cornell Dunmore. But for the purposes of this class and to sear in your mind the importance of cash, I'm going to ask you to refer to me as cash. Mm, stay with me. There's a reason for that. I am the author of Senseless Dollars. That was a booklet I wrote, I don't know, 25 years ago to young adults to warn them of borrowing and financing and how that would impact and affect their livelihood as they go forward in life. That led me to write a book called The Ultimate Debt Escape Plan. The Ultimate Debt Escape Plan is a comprehensive book to show consumers how to get out of debt. And lastly, I am the author of the soon to be released ebook called Cash Mountain. That, that book is going to teach you the lessons that we're going to learn throughout this course, which this is a training course for eight weeks. So every Saturday beginning today at 6 p.m., we're going to go through a lesson right? Lastly, uh, in full disclosure, I am the founder and senior pastor of Catch of the Day DC Church located in Washington, DC. A quick word of prayer. Father, we're here to learn about how money works against us and what we can do about it. I ask you to open up the eyes of our understanding and may you enter into our presence because we said what two or three gathered, there you would be. I know you with me, I know you with them. So open up our eyes so we may see and take advantage of your holy word and the lessons of life. Thank you in advance. We ask these prayers in Jesus name, amen. Okay, so let me begin by sharing my personal testimony and why I'm providing this training uh, free. When I first got married, my wife and I bought some furniture from Marlowe's Furniture Store in Forestville, Maryland. And I paid that bill for a year. And at the end of the year, the balance was almost the same as when I started. So I'm like, oh, mm -mm, nope, something wrong here. That's when I began to research what was going on with that bill. I was curious. I was like, what, what, what's going on? What? I done paid the bill and this almost like, it's like I didn't even pay it. I still got the same balance. I still got to pay that another year. So that's when I began to research and I found out how credit works against you. And that's the gist of this course, how credit works against you and what can you do about it? So I want to do a quick dedication. We get we get the, the the household stuff out of the way. Then we'll jump in. All right. Um, again, when I was writing the census dollars, I was thinking of young adults because I, in my mind, they needed it the most because they 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 don't know. You know, you're in your twenties. You don't you didn't manage the household. So what do you know? And then yet you're gonna have to go and manage a part an apartment. Or even so, if you're going to college, your parents are not going with you. So you're 18, 17 years old, you're going to college, you're gonna to have to learn how to manage money there too. Stay with me. So I thought it was about, I thought it was a young thing. Well, I found out different. And here's what I found out. 
It's not a young thing. It's a it's it's a middle age thing. It's a married with children thing. It's a it's a it's a singles thing. Uh, it's a, a, a engaged thing. It's a it's a couples thing. Very much so. So everybody need how to know how and the best way to manage their income so that they're able to earn interest for themselves and not for the banks, money lenders payday uh, 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 loan sharks. Yeah, we don't, We got to stop that. We got to stop it, right? So let me continue. So the, uh, a, a quick disclaimer. So we're almost going to jump in, right? Stay with me for a minute. So a, a quick disclaimer. So the lessons I will share with you this evening are fundamental principles which I learned over the course of 35 years, and I documented it. I'm not a financial planner. I do not pretend or portend to be one. I'm not, I'm not that, right? I'm just sharing what I learned. So if you need a financial planner or a debt counselor, right? Because you, you're so deep in, you're so, you, you got so much debt, so many credit cards, so many loans outstanding. You might just need a debt counselor. They exist. So look into that Google app, right? Financial planner or a debt counselor who is going to counsel you and hold your hand and walk you through what you're going to need to do to get out of debt. Okay, stay with me. So if you need a professional, you should seek that person out because I'm not I'm not that guy. I'm just sharing things I learned over the, the course of 35 years, right? So with that being said, I take no responsibility for anything you see in this lesson. Most of it's original. A lot of it is coming from of the book of Proverbs, King Solomon wrote it, right? Because he was, the, at the time, he was the smartest man and the richest man on the planet. So we're going we're gonna to glean from the book of Proverbs in the Holy Bible. And then the second person in the Bible was Jesus. He taught on money and debt a lot. Uh, we're going to get into that. You know, that's, that's further down. It, it round about um, lesson seven or eight. Jesus taught about money a lot because he knew um how important it was to mankind how important it was to money lenders right they had money lenders back then back at that time and he knew how important it was to us and our eternal soul we're going to get into that in lesson seven right it's way up the line we're going to take the practical everything you're going to see um this evening is practical you can practice it and you have to choose if that's if that's what you want to do. So without further ado, I'm going to go to the um, the first um, slide. So bear with me because this is all new for me. But we're going to see what happened today. All right. I pray that you can see this. Give me a minute. Um, it's new. Now I hope you guys can see that. Right. That's a picture of me. My younger. My that, that's my younger me. Right. So Cash Mountain. Let's get started. Lesson one, we have to understand that cash is king and not credit, that there is a danger when we are working with digital money. Yeah, I'm talking about cash app and uh, Zelle and um, mm, PayPal. There's a danger to work with di digital money. We're going to get into that. right? We're gonna, I'm, I'm going to help you understand that. Brothers and sisters, cash is king. The question is, Will you wear the crown? Will you wear the crown? You have to choose to do that. So I want to take a talk a little bit about a FICO score. I'm not going, I'm not going to stay here, right? Because FICO scores are important. And let's talk about it. So the purpose of a FICO score is, is to score you and see how you pay back money. We're talking about cash money. How do you pay back money? Right, because every time you have a credit card or a loan, they report that to the credit bureau. But the credit bureau is separate from the people who do the FICO scores. They're not the same entity. So let's talk about the FICO. We'll deal with the credit, uh, um, with the credit, the, the, the folks who who keep up with your credit. They because that's 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 score that's score too, but it's not number. It's, it's, it's they telling the lenders and people who who will lend you money, people who you need money from, from or what money from or what. They're the ones who report uh, to the person who is about to make the loan, whether or not Cornell, I'm using myself, not you, is Cornell going to pay me back, 
right? Because he won a lot of money. He won a lot of money for that car. That's like, that about $25,000, 30000 30, and we didn't tax the interest on that. I, I'm going to give him $25,000, $30,000, $35,000 in cash as a loan. I'm going to get a car note. Y'all know about that. I'm going to get a car note. I'm going to get a car note. I'm going to have a car note. You got to pay with interest. I want my money back, and I want interest to that, right? FICO scores. Can you be trusted to pay the lender or the creditor back? That's what they want to know. So they're going to lend you all the money in the world. You're going to get the lowest interest rate. You get under 600, go into the 500, they'd be like, oh, mm, I don't know. I get, oh, I ain't. Mm -mm, not, mm. I'm going to give him the money. I'm going to get Cornell the money, but he's going to get the highest interest rate because I don't trust him. I'm going to get my money back early. Mm. The higher the interest rate, the sooner the lender is paid. Let me help you with, with that. Give you a scenario. So, so let's say you, you took out a favor. You took out a 30-year mortgage. If you do the math, that's 360 months. In 360 months, you would have bought your house three times. That's just a fact. That's not me. You do the math. Just Google it. It's 360 months. As payment, you have paid three times for that house because the rest of it is interest. So here's a little trick because it's not in the lesson. I don't know if you call it a trick. It's just something that's out there, but maybe you don't know it. You want to uh, uh, you want to finish that loan off sooner, like 21 years? That's doable, right? Instead of 30, you knock nine years off. That's nine years of a payment and nine years of no interest. And the way you do that, you make small payments to cut into the principal, right? Because the principal, let's talk about that a minute because that was I wrote that down. The principal is the amount you borrow, the amount the lender makes off of you as a result of giving you their money. Because when you're buying a house today, oh, you got 1000 400000 $500,000, $600,000. Then people want their money back. I mean, but if you loan that kind of money, you want your money back too. So what they do, they load it up front. Stay with me. They load it up front with interest. So the first 15 years is all interest. You have not paid for nothing. That is the interest. The first 15 years, this is true of any loan. You split it in half. The first half is all interest, all interest. You sit there and you let that go to 30 years, you're going to be paying a lot of money. You're going to lose a lot of money. You're going to be paying a lot of money, and you're going to be in that loan longer. And this is what we, I hope you can see, right? You, how to get out of debt and how to pay off your creditors sooner than later. So we're going to we're gonna see what King Solomon, because he, he had something to say about that, how, how soon or quick you should pay off a loan. We, we're going to get to that. And, and it's short, right? So a good name that now I want, before I read that scripture, I want you to think about your FICO score as your reputation. Can I trust Cornell? 800. Can I trust Cornell? 700, different interest rate. Uh, maybe I can trust Cornell? 600. 500, 400? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to need my money up front because he might, he's going to pay a couple of things. He, I ain't going to see Cornell. He's not, he's going to be running from me. Uh -huh, but I'm going to have people try to find him. He's going to duck. He won't answer your phone. He don't answer email. He won't text me back. That's a 400 score. And that means you're going to get a high interest rate. And with, with that being said, let me tell you, this came in the mail. came in the mail at my house yesterday. They told me it was true. I did not believe them. I got a solicitation from TD Bank. And... It, 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 they didn't hide anything. They put it right up the front. It was big, bold. I was, I was shocked, right? They're not hiding. You can get a credit card with TD Bank, but you're going to pay 20%, 25%, or 30% interest. Brothers and sisters, that is off the chart. Let me help you with that. On the dollar, you're going to pay 20 cents on the dollar. If for every dollar you borrow, you're gonna to have to give up 20 cents. You think about that. That's your hard-earned cash. It's going, you're giving it away. Interest. Stay with me. 25%. I gotta give you a quarter on a dollar, a whole quarter. My mother would say, a whole quarter on a dollar. Every dollar I borrow, you getting a quarter. 
I'm gonna need to go in that business, but I'm not. But say, stay with me. It was high as thirty percent. I was flabbergasted. I, 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 I said, I'm gonna have to share that because this is just this, 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 what. And you wonder why we don't have no money at the end of the month. You wonder why you, uh, we're making ends meet. You, you wonder. You wondering a lot because your cash be gone. See, I'm not talking about digital cash. That's tricky. That's tricky for so many reasons because cash is king. Stay with me. So your reputation is in the scripture and, and your FICO score tells a lender, are you trustworthy, right? So here's what King Solomon said. A good name mm, is to be desired more than great riches. Favor is better than silver and gold. I, I want you to, to process that. A good name is to be desired and the way I say it is more than silver or gold. Your reputation is everything. Your reputation is your signature. Your reputation is your FICO score. You screw that up, your reputation goes down. Your reputation, ain't nobody trusting you. That's like I loan you $100. You say, I'm paying you back it, uh, when I get paid next week. Next week comes, you don't. You, you, you seem to can't find me. You forgot my name. You don't call me. What am I to do? I get... I could have gave you $100, but you asked to borrow $100. So I want my money back. That's all lenders. They want their money back. I know you $25. I gave you $25,000. $25, I don't want your car. That's what you wanted. So even the snatch people, they, we don't want your car. I'm going to have to sell that because I need some of my money back. Y'all know who the snatch people are. They take the car from you because you didn't make the payments. A good name is to be desired more than silver and gold. Brothers and sisters, debt is not the will of God. And we're going to find out. Usury, that's, that's the biblical name of lending. Usury is not good for borrowers. I don't think it's in the presentation now, but it's coming to my mind, so I'm going to go and say it. The Bible says the rich rule over the poor. And the borrower is a slave to the lender. I'm going to say it again. I want you to process the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is a slave to the lender. I don't go, I'm not going to explain that. Let that sit with you for a minute. Credit is a thief. This is the way I look at it. I, I have a lot of original ways of looking at money, debt, lenders, creditors, right? So almost that's what I'm trying to share with you for the next eight weeks. Credit is a thief. Why do I say that? Have you ever thought about it? I didn't for a long time. Credit is the opposite of debt. If you didn't have no debt, you wouldn't have the credit. Credit leads to debt. As soon as you sign your good name on the contract, that credit becomes debt. Let me let me let me explain it another way. Every time you you charge and use your credit card. That's a loan, L-O-A-N. I want you to think, every time you swipe, you swipe some chewing gum, that's a loan. You're going to have to pay interest on that. Mm. You swipe some milk at the grocery store, that's a loan. You borrow money to get milk. I ain't judging you, but I'm just saying, every time you swipe, 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 that is a loan, brothers and sisters. You're going to have to pay that back with interest. You're not going to just pay for the milk. And if you don't pay that back right away, you might have bought that milk three times. Interest payments. You might have bought that milk three times. I want you to process that, right? Too much borrowing. I'm back. I'm, I'm back. Too much borrowing, financing, and credit will slowly rob you of personal gains. Cash. Let me say it that way. It's going to rob you of cash. Because let me tell you something. You do not pay people back in digital money. you got to have the cash in the bank. Hello. You, you, you don't even... I, I need you to give me. I gave you cash. I need cash back. I don't. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want your TV. That's for the pawn shop people. I don't. I don't want your microwave stove. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want your radio. I don't want your equipment. I don't want. I want my cash. I, want my, I gave you cash. I want cash back. Every time you swipe is a loan, and unfortunately, you're paying a lot of money. For that loan, if your if your interest rates are eighteen, 
I'm a, for real, for real, for real, for real, for real. If you're paying over 14% interest, you are giving up a lot of money, a lot of small payments going to their pocket and not yours, their household and not yours. Their children go to the beach in summertime. Yours got to go to work because you ain't got no money. You gave all them, but they, they, they living off your money. Who is they? Creditors. Who is they? Lenders. Who is they? The credit card people. They got your money because you get you signed the contract. Now, here's a travesty, and I'm going to teach that, but I don't think that's in this lesson. I, I'm going to need you to understand what the sum of the digits are. I don't think it's in this lesson. The sum of the digits. And I'm going to leave that right there. I'm going to let you think about that all week long because we're going. I'm going to show you how the sum of the digits works against you in ways that you can't imagine. And I'm going to leave that right here. Let's go. Okay, so it takes your personal gain away. It, it, it takes your self-esteem, right? Because when you owe people, you owe a lot of people. They be calling you and stuff. You be you ducking. You can't handle You can't even sleep at night because you know the people, they looking for you. They, they on the hunt. They, they do everything but knock on your door. They send stuff in the mail. You, you tear that up. They call you on the phone, you let that roll off, you know, voicemail. I'm not picking that. I know who that is. That's Bank of America. I'm not, I don't want to talk to Truist today. And TD Bank, I don't, I don't have the money. I can't, I'm struggling. There's a reason why you're struggling, right? The borrower is a slave. Let me say it another way. The borrower is always trying to make ends meet. Yeah. I never understood that. I, I just didn't. I, I, mean, I was young. People said, we just, I'm barely making ends meet. I don't know. Okay, you got two ends. Stay with me. You're trying to put them together, and you can't. You're trying to make ends meet, but they never meet. They never meet. They never meet. You're in debt. You owe a lot of people. And so you don't have cash flow. I'm going to talk about household cash flow. See, all of this is consumer-based. This is not personal finance that you learn in school with the formulas. We're not doing no form. Well, I mean, I'm going to show you a couple things, but it ain't going to be no X, Y, Z. We ain't doing algebra because I don't even like algebra. I'm going to leave that right there. I had to take, I'm a personal note. I had to take algebra three times in college because I couldn't learn it in high school. And I couldn't, I had to take three times. I don't love algebra and algebra don't love me. Stay with me. Now, here's the burden. You know, we think we, we, we got, we, we <laughs> I'm sorry. We think we're doing something. We, 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 oh, it's credit card. We got, bam. I got seven credit cards. Look at me. Everybody love me. Look, I'm rolling in money. I got credit lines. Y'all don't hit me. I got credit lines. Everybody, they get me. I said, I got an 800 credit. I can get three more credit cards. I can get Macy. I can get Nordstrom. I can get. I can get Target. I can get. I can get. I can get the shoes company. I can get an Amazon. Everybody got a credit card. You know why? They making money. Your money. Hard earned money. What you get? A burden. What do you get? What do you get? Cash flow gone. Don't have no cash flow. What do you get? Can't even go to the movies. Yeah, I mean, I mean it, 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 this just continue on. Student loans, bank and car loans, creditors, lenders, payday loans who rent out their store. I know what I'm talking about. You guys who renting out furniture, you just renting out everything, just rent, just, just, just all them loans. And creditors, they're loan shock. They out there, <laughs> you get. You can just, in some neighborhoods, you just go to the man down the street. He'll lend you money for a high percent because he don't know if he's going to get his money back to you. So that's like a loan shot. That's what we call a loan shot. Somebody in the neighborhood yeah, or somebody you know or somebody introduced you to uh, somebody. You're like, it's not a store. It's not a bank. It's a person. But the interest rate, you say, yeah, I'm going to give you this money, but you want to pay this amount back. And in your mind, okay, I got that. I got that. I can do that. You know what? I'm going to leave that alone because I'm feeling something in my spirit and it ain't good. But we're going to get to that. So stay with me for at least eight weeks because it's going to get good. So we're almost done today. We're only going to take 30 minutes. I'm not going to take a lot of your time. It's Saturday. I know you got to do. So all these things are, are, are amassing. They are accumulating debt. 
and they will serve your peace. There is some psychology, there's some psyche. There's two things I learned in life that never change. When you owe somebody, you never forget. You never forget who you owe. And guess what? They never forget you, that, that you owe them. I, I just heard a story yesterday. I ain't gonna call no names. <laughs> but I was told that a person bought lent $200 to another person. Y'all stay with me. That person didn't pay them back. All, all of a sudden, years later, person was in the grocery store. They was in Costco. And he caught, they caught each other's eye. He was like, hey, how you doing, man? You know, he felt guilty. 20 years, you ain't paid the man back. You, got, you totally ignored him. Act like you didn't borrow that money. Well, he made it right. He made him whole because he said, oh, man, um, I bought it $200. I'm gonna, I need to pay you back. So he whipped out, you know, he whipped out $10, $20 bills. Bam, you know, all paid. We good. And the person who told me the story, he said, no, you don't have to pay me back. Yes, you do. You, you got a conscience. When you owe people, you want to pay them. This is why um, bill collectors get on people's nerves. Don't y'all act like you like you a deadbeat, like you're not going to pay them back. Now, I mean, some, of, some, of y'all, <laughs> some, some of y'all just might be a deadbeat, but we're going to leave that for you to understand. I know some of y'all laughing right now, but some people don't have no churches on paying you back. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother lesson by itself. So accumulated debt will disturb your peace. I'm going to go a little bit further. It's probably in lesson three, the psychology of money. Accumulated debt will not only disturb your peace, it will disturb your soul. I want you. I want that to set with you. Accumulated debt will disturb your soul. So here, you got to make a decision. You're either going to rule or be ruled. You can take charge of your loans and your debt. You can break out of financial prison, or you can learn how to not even go there. I don't want to go there because there is backwards. Y'all remember the number line in school? Zero. To the right of the number line. This is some algebra stuff. See, I told y'all I ain't like algebra. Here we go. Okay, let me just get through it. Zero to the right of the of the of the um, of zero, the integers, I think they call them positive numbers, right? Zero, positive number. To the left of the zero are the negative numbers. So the negative numbers represent debt. You owe people, and the more you owe, the further off that line go. Oh my god. For well, some people, it feels like in, in infinity, like it's, it's never going to get back to zero because that was the goal. I think that was on my book, Zero Debt. The ultimate debt was the ultimate debt. Get. Actually, I have a, a, a copy, but I'll show you next week. Zero debt. That's that's what you got to get in your head. You got to get back to zero. I don't care where you are out there. You're going to have to learn how to, you're going to have to figure out and come up with a plan, you have the blueprint to break out of financial prison, get back to zero. And let me tell you this, I mean, this, this is right, this is not, this ain't good, but I'm gonna tell you, because I'm gonna need you to be honest with yourself. Let's assume you came out of the negative numbers to zero. You know what zero represents? Broke. You ain't got no money, you, you, just, you just pay the people off. You know, you broke, so you keep, you ain't no ends meet. The ends meet is getting to zero, zero debt is your goal, right? Because credit and debt will work against you if you don't understand how. That's going to be my job for the next eight weeks, eight weeks is to show you how. And I believe that you will be motivated, not because I told you, because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a financial plan. I'm not, I'm just sharing my experience the last 35 years. I'm not, I'm not a financial plan, but check it out. The, the rich rule over the poor. There it is, the scripture. The rich rule over the poor and the borrower is a slave to the lender. King Solomon, right? Smartest man who ever lived, and he was the richest. You can learn some, but you can learn some from a smart and a rich man. Y'all don't hear me. A lot of these, um, these, um, this presentation is going to be um, interchanged with Solomon, and I flipped from Solomon to Jesus because Jesus is God in the flesh, and God was trying to tell us something when Jesus spoke. Yeah, so. It's not God's will that you be in debt because God said, I'll, I'll make you the head and not the tail. I'm talking to the Christians thing. I know y'all heard that. 
I'll make you the head and not the tail. We we just go, we we memorize that. I ain't gonna be the head. I'm I'm a child. I'm I'm a head. I'm a head. I got I'm, I'm going ahead. I am the head. We don't even know how to do that. We just claim it. I feel in our mind faking because we don't know. We don't know how to do that. You got to learn how to be the head. You gotta you gotta learn how to manage and take charge. You have to you have to learn how to be in control. Hello. Because if you don't, you're gonna be the tail. You're gonna be behind. You're gonna be backwards. I said that now, there's a lot of truth gonna come out of these lessons, but you I'm put the mirror up. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do whatever you gotta do. And I pray, I pray and hope you do the right thing for yourself, for your psyche, for your family. Yeah, I do. Okay, great. So there's the scripture for you, Proverbs 22 and 7, King Solomon. Now I have a rule. Oh, we almost done. I'm about, I'm about two minutes late because you know, we're gonna end it. You're gonna, I'm trying to end in 30 minutes. Here's my rule as it pertains to credit cards. I don't know if you know, but the average of, of, amount of credit cards that Americans have is seven. We got a debt. We spread up there, bam. And if you do the sum of the digits, we're gonna learn that next week. It ain't good at all. It's really horrific when you see the sum of the digits. Some of y'all know where I'm going with that. Some of y'all don't, right? Here's my rule with credit cards. One is company. Two is a crowd. Three in the wallet should not be allowed. Why do I say that? Loans. Every time you swipe your credit cards and loans. So if you got seven, you just swipe it up loans. You just, you just losing your, mm, bam. And all of a sudden, you deep down in infinity debt and don't know how to come back. All messed up. People ringing your phone number, sending you emails, everything, but knocking on the door. They're not going to knock on the door. I think that's illegal. And they can't call you, just for the record, if you don't know, they can't call you after 9 o'clock at night, and they can't call you before 9 o'clock in the morning. So you, you're going to get a 12-hour window, but after that, it's ring, ring, ring. And some of them don't even, <laughs> they don't know who checking. They bring, they bring you at 845. But it's against the law, just so you know. In the U.S., your creditors, cannot contact you at the 9 p.m. You get some peace until 9 a.m. That's a 12-hour window, okay? So I'm going to say it again. One is company. Two is a crowd. Three in the wallet should not be allowed. It is hard, 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 almost impossible to keep up keep up with every time you swipe in the cards because you because you can. You can. You in the line, swipe. You want some bread, swipe. Going to the movie, swipe. That's a loan. And the expensive loans, 18% loans. You get a loaf of bread for, say, $3.50. You got to pay um, for each dollar. You It's a 25% loan. You, you, don't, you don't gave the man 75 cents. Now, you think that ain't that much? Seriously, you think that's not that much? Okay, at the end of the year, you remember the story, why I got into this, why I'm even sharing and, and giving this free um, training? At the end of the year, your, 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 your um, outstanding balance hardly goes down. Why, why is that? You know what? I have a, I have an illustration of that. I don't think it's in the lesson. It's in my book. So I'm going to have to bring that forward so you can get the picture and see why that is. There is literally a formula. It's not, y'all know it ain't algebra because I don't like algebra. So it's simple, right? A sixth grader can, can see it. It's, it's actually um, um, adding and subtracting. This is still the vision like that, right? But it will give you a picture why you're in debt and can't get out. Why you don't have no money at the end of the pay. Why you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. Why you can't make ends meet. You're going to learn all that if you stay with me for eight weeks. You're going to, you're going to learn all that. I am going to... Um, um, share again what I learned. That's all about. I ain't taking no classes. I ain't, got no, I ain't done no class now. My curiosity, my curiosity, research, homework, all that. That's what you're going to get, right? So keep that in mind. One is company, two is a crowd. Three in the wallet should not be alive. You got four, five, six, seven credit cards. What they tell me the average American has. You're going to be in deep debt. You, your can, eventually, your cash flow, your household cash flow is going to get cut off. 
And when your cash is cut off, you don't have no cash, it's, it could be depressing. That's psyche. It can disturb your soul. That's psyche. See, we're going to learn that. We're going to learn that the psychology of money and debt, if you stay with me for eight weeks. All right. So it's QA. Now, I don't, you know, I'm a, this, this is new. What I'm doing here is new. So let me see. Can I get back um, to where I am? I think I can do it by this, like doing that. There I am. Okay. QA. Um, if you have some questions, I have some answers, but uh, I'm not quite sure how to work this yet. I got to experiment with it because I'm, I'm not even seeing any comments. So that sucks because I don't even know how you feel. I need to know what you're thinking. And you can show me that. You can put those in comments or you can, I think you can like do hearts and stuff or, or, or put the thumb down, make a, a sad face or whatever you need to do, emojis. That's it, emojis. I don't even see, I don't see that, but anyway, I'll figure it out by next. So we can't do K, but if you got some questions, here's what I would um, ask you to do. Email me, right? Um, email me. My email address is CL Dunmore, just like you see. I guess that would be, so my, I guess that would be on your right screen. So Dunmore, D-N-M-O-R-E, at gmail.com. So, uh, you know, anything you learn here, you want further explanation, um, I'm, I'm, I'm here. When this ends, okay, when this lesson ends, um, everything I said and done will be automatically shipped to YouTube so, you'll, for you can, so you can go over it and review. So each lesson, at the end of each lesson, it will shift. It will, it, the, the, we just shut the vibe down, and every lesson is going to be over in YouTube. So you can go over, you know, what I said. I, I, in life, I believe things you hear, they're a nugget. They're why I call it a cash mountain. And this is why I don't use, like, money. I'm using a mountain. This is what and it's not, God gave me cash mountain. This whole concept, I don't know, four or five years ago, but I'm busy. You know, I got I got life, I got family, I got I got ministry stuff. So I, I just sat on it. But here we are. Here we are. So um yeah, so we're supposed to have a QA. So I want to see, can I get back here for a minute? Um Okay, I know you heard me, but I'm not really sure if you saw those slides. So, you know, I'll figure that out the next time, but I'm going to go back to those slides for a minute because now I just figured out maybe they wouldn't be shown. But again, just go to go to YouTube or I'm going to share, share, share them again, like just re, redo this and um, and you can review, review on YouTube. So if you forgot anything, you wanted to write something down, you can do that. Okay, great back to here well there i am so i'm going to skip through these again that's in one we talk about cat we we'll review okay the goal is to be done if at, at uh in 45 minutes and and open for q a for 15 so each 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 saturday that's the way that's the setup go for 45 and take q a um at the end so real quick cash is kid where you wear the crown? If you don't, you don't, you're a peasant. You you're in debt. You you debt. You're in debtor's prison. I'm just saying. Okay. FICO score is your reputation. It's your reputation. That's all I'm gonna say. It's your reputation. So you can see it now because the slides wasn't showing at first, from what I can tell. Um, your FICO score is your reputation. If it's high, lenders love you. You get the best interest rate. If, if it's low, they don't trust you, and you won't get the highest interest rate they can possibly. Uh, uh, give you according to the law, because it's called the truth in lending law. So they can't, they, they can't be like hustling you. Okay, they wouldn't mind, but they, they, it's against the law. Okay, debt is not the will of God. It's the review. Credit is a thief. Too much borrowing, financing credit will slowly rob you of personal gain, your self esteem, your peace of mind, and your financial security and freedom. Credit is a thief. Why? Because credit is the opposite of debt. If you didn't have so much credit, you wouldn't have so much debt. Stay with me. It's just a review. 
uh, the burden of credit. It's a burden. You got student loans. Oh, God. Student loans are off the roof. It's unreal what you got to pay for education. And everybody, every country should give education for free. Yes, they should. Because do you really want ignorant people? Is that what you're trying to do? Are you trying to get, it seems like now, only the elite uh, or rich people's kids. Yeah, I told you that. They, they got money because they're making money off of you. Interest payment. That's what. Anyway. Okay, that's it. Uh, it, it would accumulate. You don't want the burden of credit. It is a burden, right? You take credit. If you didn't take, have so much credit, you wouldn't have so many debt. If you had, didn't have so much credit and loans, mm, you wouldn't have so much debt. It's just it's a fact of life, okay? You're going to be rude or you're going to rule. Rule or be rude. You do not take charge. Somebody else will take charge of you, and you will be left holding the bill of interest. Stay with me. Okay, we said that the rich rule over the poor and the borrowers are slave to the lender. We're interjecting scriptures. If you're just joining us, we're interjecting scriptures from the book of Proverbs. Uh, King Solomon, the smartest and the richest man on the planet at the time. And we're taking uh, uh, Jesus. We're going to learn from uh, Jesus who taught us parables. You know, short story. That's all a parable is. He taught us short stories a lot about money, debt, lending, the love of it, and what it would do to you. So we're going to get into that as we go along. Well, uh, it's the sprinkling things. Uh, Cornell's rule is my personal rule. One is company, talking about credit card. Two is a crowd. Three in the in the wallet should not be allowed. I want you to think about that. You got more three credit cards, you're in danger. You're you're in danger of being always broke. You're in danger of being of of, of being um going to debtor's prison. It's gonna take a long time. You don't want to be there. You don't want your family there. Because you get older, you keep doing this stuff. You keep on charging the bar and all this stuff. Your, 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 it's gonna, your family going to suffer. You're going to suffer, and everybody in the household is going to suffer. Okay? So, okay, well, yes, we go. Q&A. So, well, I can't do this. I got to figure out this software. Okay? But I did want to go to the next slide because I wanted to recommend this book. Now, I don't know if you read this book. Oh, my God. This man did what Jesus did. He's telling short stories. George Clayson. I think it's only seven chapters. I think. Yeah. You need to buy this book. Immediately go on Amazon. It's been out so long, you can get the book for under $10. All kind of, you know, they're the same thing, but they come with softback, hardback. You get, a, you get an ebook. It's real cheap, like $5.99, something like that. You need to get this book because George Clayson break it all down in ways that you can't imagine. It's unreal. He kind of like my little personal finance counselor because his every every chapter is easy to read. It's kind of entertaining and interesting. Really, I went through the book. I think I'm in about a day and a half, you know. And it's not thick. Just get it, get it. Okay, now that I'm I'm advising on. The Richest Man in Babylon. It, it, I'm going to leave it right there. Get the book. You come back and tell me. We have a, a good conversation about that. Okay, great. So I, I'm going to ask you if you like. So here's the way that you can um, give me some feedback, some comments. Like comment on what you learned or what you what you, what's, what's new for you and what you got the most of. I would really appreciate that because all eight lessons are free and not charging. Um, so you can like my, my Facebook page. I got I'm on Instagram, Cash Mountain, TikTok, Cash Mountain, YouTube, Cash Mountain, and X Twitter. I call it X Twitter. They want to say X it's Twitter. That's the way I do it. It's X Twitter. And all of these are at Cash Mountain today. So this training is called Cash Mountain Today. The book I wrote or I'm writing, soon to be released in December, hope, hopefully before Christmas. Um, that's called Cash Mountain. So the video recordings, post reels and stories, you'll see those coming up in the feed because I'll be doing that um, throughout the course. Okay, great. And I think that's it. Oh, yeah, that's two. Well, there we go. Thank you for coming. Oh, it's 45 minutes. I wish you had time for, I wish I knew how to do the Q&A, but I'm going to learn. I'll, I'll figure it out by next week so you can do the Q&A. I'm going to get those, those comments up so I can see what you're saying and how you're feeling along the way. So next next week gonna be even better than this week for sure. 
and your eyes will continually open. Right? I want to thank everybody for coming to this live show. I look forward to seeing you next Saturday at 6 p.m. You should invite your family and your friends and face uh, and Facebook followers. Now, if you are married, you need to you need your spouse should be watching this together. Yeah, let me tell you why. The number one reason why people get divorced in the United States is money. I'm gonna leave that right there because that's further down in the lessons. But I want you to set with that. The number one reason. Couples, divorce is money. If you uh, engage, you need to have the money talk. You can never know what you're getting into, but you need to have that talk. Money talk. Make sure your, your soon-to-be spouse and yourself are clear about money, how it works against you, and how you can use it as a team to work and, and to work and, and take charge and climb Cash Mountain. So that's, that's what I want to get you to see. Cash Mountain. You're not going into the negative number. You finally even, and now you're climbing up. You're reaching the top. You're totally in control, and you ain't never going back. It won't go back, they say, what they tell me. Okay, great. That's it. Word of prayer. Father, I thank you for everyone who stayed with me and who joined us along the way and what they have learned. Now, you need to speak to them when I when, I, when this ends. You need to get, you need to you need to write it on the tables of their heart. That's what they say in the Bible. Write it on the tablet. They said table. It's a tablet. I pray that next week they, they come with a tablet and take notes that 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 that, that they are um, learning. Right, the gold nuggets. The nuggets need to be wrote down and meditated on so they change the psychology of money. They would change and use the information to their advantage. This is my prayer. This is what I believe the people would like for from you, Father, in Jesus' name. Okay, you guys, have a wonderful evening. Enjoy your Saturday, and we'll see you back here next week for Cash Mountain when we do our lesson two. Okay, great. Bye, everybody.